In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate articulatory technique for the cervical spine. As I go through this demonstration, I'm going to be putting my hands along your neck. Your head is going to be hanging off the table, and I'm either going to be applying a little bit of pressure, pressing you down and then moving you around, or I'm going to be pulling and then also moving you around. You let me know if anything is tender, anything is painful or uncomfortable. If you need me to stop or change what I'm doing, please let me know and I'll stop at any time. Is it okay if I begin? Yes. All right. So to begin our technique, we're going to have our patient move towards the uh, end of the table. We're going to cradle their head, and we're going to be using our index and middle fingers to find their articular pillars. And we can start either at the top of the cervical spine or the bottom of the cervical spine. And then there are two options for how we can proceed here. We can either apply a little bit of compression using our abdomen on the top of their head and in a neutral position, add a little bit of longitudinal pressure just to add a tiny bit of compression to the cervical spine. Or we can add some traction with our hands cradling the head. We can lean back slightly to add a little bit of traction to the cervical spine. So I'm going to demonstrate the compression version first. So first we can add a little bit of compression using our abdomen and we can find the articular pillars. And here we're now going to move the cervical spine through all of its ranges of motion using a figure eight pattern. So we're going to add side bending and rotation and shift the cervical spine with a little bit of flexion, extension, side bending, rotation, and use our fingers pivoting on the articular pillars to encourage motion through the restricted barrier wherever we feel it. So we're using this to evaluate and as well to treat any areas where we feel re resistance. So here I'm feeling a little resistance as I'm moving up to C3. So I'm going to do this a couple times and as I start to feel improved motion then I can move up to the next segment again maintaining my cradle and maintaining my contact with articular pillars and I can move up and down the cervical spine as needed and then bring my patient back to neutral position and reassess for any improvement if I want to apply traction instead I can again cradle the head use my fingers to contact the articular pillars and then slightly lean back to engage the cervical spine with a little bit of traction and still use my fingers to create fulcrum points on the articular pillars and then bring the cervical spine through a figure eight motion, flexion, extension, side bending, rotation. And wherever I feel some resistance, I can add additional motion and try to encourage the cervical spine to move through that restricted barrier. And then I can continue using that figure eight motion working my entire way through the cervical spine, up and then down as needed. And after I feel improved range of motion, then I can return my patient back to a neutral position, back on the table, and then reassess for somatic dysfunction.